I hate this channel. No! No! So when you look at Jace's matchups, he wins almost every matchup in the laning phase, which makes him a great pocket pick if you're first picking. The ones that came pretty close were Yorick, Irelia, Olaf, and Yasuo. I took the liberty of clicking through all the top lane matchups, so you can slow down the speed and pause if you want to look at the stats more closely. Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you guys how to play Jace top lane. I fight for a brighter tomorrow. At level 1, you're going to take Q. Just by leveling your Q at level 1, you can beat almost anyone at the start of the game. And it's crucial to learn how to play the early game because if you fail the laning phase, you're going to have a bad time. Once the minions have spawned, start moving in to gain the control of the enemy's brush. Once the top laner gets to lane, immediately start harassing them with your ranged auto as you kite back and forth in the brush to de-aggro the minions. This way, you can zone out the enemy top laner of getting any farm or EXP to give you an early lead against your opponent. If you happen to encounter your opponent waiting in the brush, fight them. Make sure you hit them with your ranged auto first to reduce their armor and magic resistance before you throw out your Q. Then switch to your hammer form to give yourself a bonus attack damage and slow them with your Q and hopefully you are able to either get an early summoner spell from your opponent or get first blood. Even if you have to help your jungler leash, you can still go to lane and get an early harass on your opponent at level 1. But if your opponent is either running ignite or exhaust, don't go in for the 1v1 unless you have them too. If you're not running those summoner spells, poke your opponents as you contest for their CS and once they're low, you can go in for a kill. As you take the lead by starving out your opponent, the wave will be pushing and you'll be overextending, which makes you a prime target for the enemy jungler. So take notes to see where the opponent's jungler has started. In this scenario, seeing Fizz came to lane early, as well as seeing the enemy bot lane came to lane late, it's most likely the opponent jungler has started red side. Around 3 minutes should be the time when the opponent jungler looks for a gank, so go ahead and place a ward in the river to grant you some vision. And once you see the enemy jungler near your top side, let your teammates know so mid lane will be mentally prepared as well as relieving bot lane of any potential early ganks. At level 2, you're going to take E to harass your opponents when they go for CS, and at level 3, you can either take Q or W, depending on whether you need to play safe to poke with your Q or W to harass most melee champions when they go for CS. On your first pack, start working towards these items depending on your matchup. And if you have the extra gold, go ahead and purchase a control ward which is going to be the best investment that you'll ever make and I'll show you later in the video. Oh and before I forget, your passive also grants you a bonus movement speed as well as being able to walk through minions for 1.25 seconds, which can help you get some kills by faking out your opponent. While your enemies are still below level 6, you'll still have absolute control over your lane because you basically have double the abilities against your opponents as you switch from cannon form to hammer form, so abuse it as much as you can. When you Q with your hammer form, it'll immediately add an extra auto by itself if your auto attack is available, but if the enemy is running away from you, it won't add the extra auto attack because they'll be out of range. So while your opponents are still below level 6, keep a constant harass before they get their ultimate. Since Jace doesn't have an ultimate, you have to respect your opponents once they finally hit 6 because they'll have a huge power spike of being able to burst you down. So keep a safe distance against your opponent and apply a constant poke to whittle down their health to counter their advantage of obtaining an ultimate. Since you'll be spending a lot of mana to poke, switch to your hammer form when you're last hitting since your W's passive will restore mana per hit. But if you're learning how to play Jace, you can purchase towards a Muramana to counter Jace's mana issues. But once you get proficient at playing Jace, you can skip this item to invest your gold onto better items. If you know your enemy's ultimate is down, you should always try to look for a fight to capitalize on their loss of power spike, and take control over the lane to keep a constant advantage when you can. But do keep in mind of where your enemy jungler might be before you go in for an all in when you know your opponent has his ultimate up. In this scenario, Fizz ults me and I assumed that the enemy jungler was near me since I don't have any vision. Since I realized that no one was here, I quickly went in for an all in to take another free kill. You'll absolutely love purchasing control wards because playing top lane is like living on a little island and you'll always be safe as long as you have vision and you have good map awareness. But your safety will be compromised if your opponent clears them. But since you're playing Jace, fighting for your turf will be a breeze in a 1v1 situation. But always watch how your enemy is playing. If he isn't scared fighting a 1v1, the enemy jungler probably is nearby. If they are scared, as they should be playing against Jace, it means the jungler is not nearby, which gives you a green light to go for an all-in. While you're walking back to lane, you can still gain a lot of intel by watching how they play. The fact that the enemy Echo was scared to go for a last hit on that minion, and he's playing more towards the left side behind his minions, it's a high chance that the enemy jungler is not nearby and the river brush is not warded. So you can take the advantage of forcing a 1v1 by starting a fight by closing off the enemy's exits to get yourself another free kill. If you still know that the enemy didn't ward the river brush, you can keep punishing them for their lack of vision. When your lane is being pushed, 
push to always find yourself something to do. Whether it's picking up fruits by the river, ganking mid lane for kills, gaining intel of the enemy's jungle, and by keeping a constant presence of the top half of the map, it'll help you and your team to get an early lead against your opponents to help your team snowball towards mid game. When you know you're going to be overextending to hit the tower, and you don't know where the enemy jungler is, always lay yourself a deep ward, so you can prevent getting ganked ahead of time. Your W and cannon form will help tremendously when you're taking down towers, and since you're playing Jace, you're more than likely able to take the first tower bonus, which is going to aid you towards the mid game. Congratulations, you've learned how to play the early game. Just like the early game, you want to constantly keep pushing out top lane and go straight towards mid lane to help take down the tower. But if you spot the enemy jungler far away from you, take the advantage of fighting a 1v1 instead of going to mid lane, and keep pushing top lane for a turret. If you have teleport up as well as dragons being up, go ahead and keep pressuring top lane and check the minimap to see if you need to teleport. And since 3 people came to top lane, your team was able to take a free ocean drake, which is going to help Jace tremendously with his mana issues. And since the enemy team still has 3 people top lane, and your team is pushing bot lane, you can teleport mid lane to take a free tower and rotate bot lane to group with your team. While you're running around the map, you'll have many opportunities of getting some kills. So I think this is a good time to teach you about Jace's combos. When you're throwing out your cannon combo, it's much slower if you extend out your E, so put your E closer towards you so your Q travels faster. Practice throwing out Q first, then E, because laying down E then Q is much slower. Also, it's really good to put E closer towards you because it gives Jace a faster way to gap close onto an enemy. Sometimes, your Q and E combo will not go off because you press the buttons too fast or at the same time. If you play with indicators on. So go to options and enable pressing spells at the same time. When you're trying to combo in your hammer form, your E animation is very long so it takes a while to follow up with your Q and an extra auto. So it's much faster to Q, extra auto, then E, which is a quick way to prop your Thunderlords onto your enemies. If you're in a tight situation where you can't afford taking an extra hit from the enemy in order to escape, you can also Q, E, then auto attack by quickly clicking on the enemy before they fly off too far. You may need to practice a lot to master this combo because it's very hard to pull off consistently. If you add the first auto and your Ws with these combos, this is the fastest way to deal the most damage in the shortest amount of time. Jace has an amazing wave clear plus destroying towers with your W which allows you to split push very quickly. When you're split pushing, make sure you know where most people are on the minimap before you proceed. When you are unsure where everyone is, you can hide in the brush to wait for someone to come top to wave clear, then proceed split pushing. If the enemies haven't realized it's already mid game, you're Jace! So go ahead and take their inhib turret while they're still playing the early game. In fact, just take the inhibitor too. While you're constantly pressuring top lane, keep an eye out for a TP opportunity. In this clip, since no one is landing any of their skill shots, this would be a waste of a teleport since the enemy team will just engage. But once an engagement breaks out, immediately teleport over and group up with your team to start taking objectives together. If Baron is up, start pressuring bot lane so if your teammates decide to start Baron, you can teleport on over to help out your team if necessary. Congratulations, you've learned how to play the mid game. In teamfights, Jace isn't the best champion for a 5v5 situation, hence the reason why Jace's late game is complete garbage. Your best bet in teamfights are skirmishes that are very scattered and not grouped up, which gives you the ability to start eliminating champions one by one by switching from your cannon form to hammer form to release your full combo onto a single target. But if you're forced to fight a full teamfight, it has to be a calculated one. So let's go over some scenarios. So here a teamfight breaks out, and you want to deal as much damage as you can in your cannon form first. Warwick uses his ult onto me instead of 
saving it for our AD carry. Since Talon is an easy pick, you want to switch to Hammer Form only when you know you can eliminate them because by then you're fully committing to be on a front line. Once the frontliners are out of the picture, you can switch to your cannon form and poke down and gap close onto the rest of the enemy. So another team fight breaks out with the same team. Since I remember that Warwick disregarded my ADC and ulted onto me earlier, I'm going to poke with my cannon form and instantly switch to my hammer form when I get into Warwick's ultimate range, which grants me an extra 35 armor and magic resist, which is going to give me a huge sustain. Once Tristana focuses down Warwick while I'm suppressed, I'm going to use up all of my hammer form abilities and then switch to my cannon form to chunk down the enemy karma, and then eliminate the other players by applying my full combos in both forms for an ace. In this clip, Zack commits to a team fight. You want to generally cannon combo the enemy backlines, but I missed hitting Lissandra. Since I feel that Lissandra might ult me, I immediately switch to my cannon form once she commits into the team fight to grant me some sustain. Zed focuses down Annie, but she's zoning to negate his ultimate. Your team is already at a winning position, so use your cannon form combo to time her zonius and switch to your hammer form to gap close onto the enemy team. You can also flash E to reposition a single enemy target to put someone into a dangerous position, and you get yourself a 4 for 0 trade. Now, most of these team fights look pretty easy, which is true. If the enemy team is basically all squishy carry champions, it's very easy to eliminate them by chunking the enemy team with your cannon form and switching to your hammer form when you can clearly see that you can fully commit to a team fight and clean up the enemy team. But if your team consists of all squishy carry champions without any disengagers and the enemy team has a couple of tanks with engagers, you're forced to become a frontliner which is the most awkward position for Jace to be in because you won't be able to properly play as a carry role. And if any one of your opponent gets caught, your team automatically loses just from the team composition alone. So if you're in this awkward situation in solo queue, your best bet is to either split push or catch out an enemy 1v1 to give your team an advantage to prevent any team fights. When you split pushing in the late game, it's important that you don't get caught out because death timers are going to last a very long time which gives the enemy team to take free objectives of either pushing for an inhibitor or taking a free Baron while your team is outnumbered. So when you're split pushing, it's important to keep a constant pressure in all lanes to force the enemies to be preoccupied clearing lanes. While your enemies are preoccupied wave clearing, rotate to a different lane to take control of the map and contest more free objectives. Learning how to take advantage in the early game is going to be very important for Jace because you generally don't want to take into the late game. But if you are forced to play in the late game, you're going to have to learn the basic combos and knowing when to and when not to switch forms with your ultimate. So if you don't have a solid foundation of the essential you're going to have a very bad time in the late game. So try to get a feel for the main components of his capabilities so you'll have a smooth transition with your teammates towards the end of the game. Congratulations, you've learned how to play the late game. For the last game, the enemy top laner only has one game of Teemo in ranked, so it was kind of an unfair matchup in terms of champion skills. After your normal basic pokes at the start, I go in for the harass, but since I know that Teemo brought Ignite with him, I'm going to disengage and start falling back. Since the enemy wasn't able to get a kill by using Ignite, now you have a huge lead because they've invested their summoner spell for kills, and in this situation, it wasn't profitable because he failed to kill me since you can just teleport back to lane and get a lead of gold and EXP while your enemy has to walk back to lane. While I have the level advantage, I keep up the harass with my basic combos. While the lane is pushing, I place down my ward since the enemy Olaf should be clearing topside around this time. Teemo starts to clear my control ward, so I'm going to fight for my territory. Teemo is able to clear my ward and dodge my cannon combo, but I was able to close the gap with my hammer form and snipe him down by switching to my cannon form. So here, I was going to teleport back to base after clearing the wave, but I saw my mid laner being ganked, so I head on over. Olaf activated his ghost, so I flash Q to get another kill which is going to give me a huge lead for top lane. For my first back, I rushed Boots of Swiftness to counter Teemo's mobility 
Olivia as well as Olaf's is slow from his axes if he decides to gank me because they don't have a hard CC. While my lane is being pushed, I'm going to go pick up some fruits to regen some mana. Then Olaf comes top lane for a gank, but with my speed boost from my ability as well as my boots, I was able to get out safely. A small skirmish breaks out of top lane. I snipe down Olaf with my cannon form, then Alistar tanks the turret shots, giving me a free double kill, as well as being able to take down the enemy top tower. While the enemy team is focusing down the infernal drake, I teleport in to fight a small skirmish. This is a great position for you to be in since the enemy team is being scattered. Once I took out Olaf, I chased down Sona to give myself another double kill. If you ever get a good Jace on your team, always, always, always give the Rift Herald buff to him, because his hammer form combo will deal a ridiculous amount of damage and just eliminate anyone out of existence. Just look at that! Where'd they go? Once two of the enemies were down, our team took a free bear. So here, Orianna and Olaf is chasing down our Alistar. I focused on Orianna, but she flashes out to get to safety. So here, I knew I could 1v1 Olaf in a long fight. But if Orianna came back to aid him, I wouldn't be able to since I knew she had her ultimate. So I hold on to my abilities. Since I see Orianna is coming back, and she no longer has any summoner spells, I bait the enemies to keep fighting me. And once Orianna was in range, I flash Q, extra auto, to take out Orianna. Since my abilities are down, I'm going to keep my distance against Olaf and wait for my cooldown. Once my hammer form was back up, as well as my Rift Herald buff, I used my Q extra auto E combo to take another double kill, which gave our team a free inhibitor. So here, some of my teammates were overextending in an uneven matchup, so ignore what they're doing and just focus down split pushing and we were able to take two top turrets. At the 30 minute mark, both team was ready to contest Baron. Leeson makes a questionable play and then a team fight breaks out. I'm gonna take a break from talking, so enjoy the show. Once we got an ace, we've already won the game. I mean, we could have won the game if Zillion wasn't focusing the inhibitor, so I was left by myself to take the Nexus turrets. But we weren't able to take the Nexus for a victory since the enemy team was up again. So while I was pushing bot lane with my teleport available, Lee makes another questionable play and gets himself killed. And now we're down to a 4v5. While I was pressuring bot lane, Orianna came to defend the turret to clear the wave. So I rotated towards mid lane to snipe down Jin with my cannon form and take out Olaf with my hammer form. Once we took out Jin and Olaf, it gave our team an easy access to take the main inhibitor and take the nexus for a victory. Congratulations, you've learned how to play Jay's top lane. For those of you guys who want to try this out, here are my runes, masteries, and what items to buy. Thank you guys for watching the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Fuck you.